cringe. No. <laughs> Hey guys, it's Madison back in my little corner on the internet or as many of you guys wanted me to say back in the blue chair for another crazy video Today we are reacting to what so many of you guys wanted me to react to which is the Netflix docu-series Unwell particularly the first episode all about essential oils this is, I can already tell, this is going to be a really crazy episode. But if I do end up getting demonetized, don't forget to subscribe um, and give this video a thumbs up for the effort. I also want to give a shout out to Margaret Angel here on YouTube. She did a video on Unwell as well, on Unwell as well. I wanted to read the company Young Living, the essential oil company that is kind of the main subject from what I can tell of this whole episode. I wanted to read their response before even watching Unwell just to kind of preface it and um, we can have a laugh on that. I found this response through MLM Mombi and Young Living has said, Dear global team, we are aware that Netflix produced a documentary series about the wellness industry that aired today and in an episode mentioned essential oils and Young Living. We want to let you know that any inaccuracies or mischaracterizations will be appropriately addressed through the proper channels. As the essential oils movement grows and Young Living continues to be the world leader of this movement, media interest increases, both positively and negatively. I feel like this is like the company way of playing the victim. <laughs> this is not the first time, nor will it be the last time, don't hate me because I'm famous, that we are a target for detractors. There will be noise that accompanies a story like this, and we will rise above it as we always have done. It's like rise above the haters. Once again, I haven't seen the video yet, but I wonder if it's like just a story or a lot of actual data and evidence. With your leadership and alignment and our razor focus on our mission of sharing essential oils and their benefits, we will continue to improve and enhance lives around the world. As always, we ask that you avoid the noise and do not seek out or promote the series. We ask that you avoid the noise and don't seek out or promote the series? So does that mean you can't talk about it, whether positive or negative, because that promotes the series, which might have information that Young Living doesn't want you to know or other people to know? and to not seek it out. So that means don't watch this information that's about your company. You are literally in this company selling and promoting something and they're saying don't even seek out any negative criticism. Don't even watch this thing that might have a lot to do with what you're doing right now. Like that's so toxic. That's negativity. Those are haters. Don't even listen to them. Don't even watch them. Just completely shut all of that out so that you're not even exposed to the truth. Wow. This will only push it into the trending section of the platform. So why don't you want it to be trending? If you really weren't afraid or there really wasn't truths in that episode, you wouldn't be so aggressively trying to get people to not see it, you know? At present, it is not listed in the trending section, nor is it listed in new releases or any featured section. We know who we are and we stand strong in our vision to create a healthy home for each of us and a healthy world for all of us. We love you and appreciate you always. From the Global Sales Director, use this information to answer any questions with your team. Then they're telling other distributors to tell people if they have any questions on this docu-series to not watch it, to not promote it, to not talk about it at all. 
You're literally shutting out any sort of valid criticism. I just really have a huge issue with this whole mentality of just because someone says something that you don't like or you don't personally agree with, all of a sudden it's hate or it's negativity, not valid criticism. I'm already heated and we haven't even watched the video. Let's actually get into the video and react and see what Young Living is so afraid of. All right, so here's the deal. Originally on Wednesday, yesterday, when this video was supposed to go up, I had uploaded the video as a reaction style video with the audio from Netflix. Bad idea, horrible idea really no one's fault but my own but not only did i get copyright striked but they also made it that no one could even see the video if i were to upload it so basically i'm back here after thinking that the video was about to be uploaded trying to wing it and make it so that you guys can see this video uh the thing is i filmed it as a reaction video but you're not going to be able to hear the audio that I'm reacting to. So the only way I can think in my head to make this watchable is to do voiceovers for what I'm reacting to. I don't know if that's gonna go well and I'm so sorry if it is weird to watch, but I wanted, you know, the, the valuable knowledge, knowledge in here to be shared with all of you guys, so. Yeah, give thumbs up for the effort. I don't know. I just got into a bottle of kombucha, so I might get a little weird. Just kidding. The episode opens up with a ton of people using essential oils and a woman saying how essential oils used to be fringe back in the day, but nowadays they're sold everywhere and they're a multi-billion dollar industry. Multi-billion dollar industry. As if that proves their validity, not that it's an industry <laughs> made for profit. I do want to note real quickly, there's so many dangers or potential dangers to essential oils, especially if you don't use them correctly or you're being fed misinformation. It's who I am. It's a lifestyle for me. It's my lifestyle. That's what I think is so interesting about essential oils is that so many people say something along those lines, yet they also say that it's like this medicinal product. And I just think about other medicines, even medicines sold by big pharma, and no one ever takes a medicine and is like, this is who I am, it's my lifestyle. Like no one ever says antibiotics are who I am, they're my lifestyle, you know? Then the video goes into a preface on a little bit of the MLM scheme, talking about how these companies have gained a cult-like following that preys on housewives and mothers. Then we see the lovely Amy Korberg, who is an aromatherapist in a clinical setting, who talks about how the health system has some problems. I do think using aromatherapy in a clinical setting is super fascinating. Like, I'm so curious about the scientific evidence that's going to be presented over the years, the clinical studies. And then Amy says that aromatic oils have been around for over 5,000 years. This isn't new, it's just new to the clinical setting. And that means that, you know, we should trust it, right? When someone says it's been around for 5,000 years, so that means it's good. Like people of the past used it, so that means it's good. There's so many examples of terrible medicinal practices that our ancestors use that we do not use today because it's just not good and they don't work. And then you see Amy explaining that some of it could be placebo effect, but that she still doesn't see it going away, only getting bigger. Bigger than a multi-billion dollar industry? I'd say that's already pretty big. Then we meet the lovely mother Marshall and her special needs child, Sarah. That mom seems so adorable, so sweet. As some of you guys know, if you've been around and seen a few of my videos, whenever it comes to alternative medicine treatments on children with autism, I just genuinely get really upset about it. So I don't think this part of the video I'm going to react really well to. 
Um, it just feels like parents of children with autism are really desperate and really vulnerable because there's not a ton of treatments or solutions out there. And I know a lot of you guys have commented on my videos as an autistic person and have even said, I like who I am. I don't want to change who I am. So I just have a feeling this part's going to be really hard to watch. Marshall goes on to describe that as a mother of a child with autism, she's constantly searching out different behavioral therapies and things that will help Sarah. I think that this showcases why people believe so strongly in alternative therapies or are willing to believe so strongly in alternative therapies. Logically, it's easy to look at something on the outside and see it as snake oil or all placebo, but when you have this desperation to find something that helps with whatever ailment or situation you're dealing with, you develop this emotional connection to it. You want so badly for it to be the solution that you're looking for, and I can really feel for this mom. So Sarah and Marshall meet up with Laura Cantell, who is a aromatherapist. And Laura describes all the different ways that you can use essential oils, and she says that there's very few scenarios that she can name where it would be beneficial to ingest an essential oil. Love her. Love her. Laura explains that essential oils can burn your mucous membrane, and that basically it's just not needed. Like, just don't do it kind of thing, you know? And then Marshall expresses her hope that Sarah could be helped by these essential oils. I can't help but feel really, really nervous when alternative medicine practices are used on children or those with autism who can't fully speak up for themselves. I can't help but feel like it's medical experimentation, except for it's medical experimentation on people who can't say how this medical product is affecting them and making them feel. Next, we meet the lovely Dr. Z and his cute little family. I'm gonna try my best to blur out the children's faces. And the scene where we meet Dr. Z and his family, he is spraying peppermint essential oil into his children's faces. We use essential oils throughout our day. It's just happiness in a bottle. Those children do not look very happy being sprayed in the face with essential oils. It does not look to them like happiness in a bottle. Do not spray your children with essential oils in the face. <laughs> yeah. I love this line, so I had to add it in. Dr. Z says, it's become a culture that we've created here. It's become a culture. A culture. Next, we get a lovely montage of Dr. Z's routine, and it's really interesting. It's some American Psycho type stuff. I really wish that you guys could hear the audio, especially how this family talks. The only suggestion I guess I can make is just to go watch it because, um, yeah, I uh, don't want to get copyright striked. This reminds me of that one scene in American Psycho. Like anyone else automatically think of that when they watch this guy. I wonder if they did that on purpose, if they made it out to be exactly like the intro of American Psycho, but yeah. So then Dr. Z introduces himself. His full name is Eric Zelensky and he's an entrepreneur and licensed chiropractor. And you gotta love that shot where he's just spraying essential oils into his face. Also, I just have to note, he calls himself Dr. Z, but he's an entrepreneur and licensed chiropractor. Now, don't get me wrong, growing up, my next door neighbor was a chiropractor. I was a ballet dancer and they helped me a lot with spinal alignment and all of that, but... What does being a licensed chiropractor have to do with knowledge in essential oils or advice on essential oils or how essential oils react to your body, especially when they're ingested? What does that, you know, just me? Dr. Z goes on to saying, we're blessed to be able to help people through buying our master classes and books. We're blessed to help people through buying our master classes and books. 
You're doing it all just to help people. I can totally tell, Dr. Z. That's the main thing you care about. Dr. Z, I really don't want to call him that for the rest of the video. I'm going to call him the Z-Man. The Z-Man goes on to talk about the day in the life and how his family uses essential oils. And basically, um, they use essential oils everywhere and for everything. I do think that part of them does believe at least a little bit in the healing powers, but I do think that it's massively exacerbated by... Exas... That... Did I? I don't think I said that right. But anyways, it's massively blown out of proportion. Now I'm just thinking of really weird innuendos from what I'm saying. But anyways, it just escalates their use more and more because of the fact that they're selling it. And so, of course, if you're selling something and you somewhat believe in the benefits, it's just going to become every single aspect you're going to become a living, walking, breathing poster child of the product or giant advertisement of the product. Z-Man goes on to talking about how they use essential oils in their food as he's preparing a smoothie with his daughter. And then he says, many aromatherapists claim you should not ingest essential oils, but I'll argue this till I'm blue in the face. And the way he said it in the movie is really funny. The movie, the episode, you get what I mean. Um, but I can't show that. So you're just going to have to take my word for it. Why did I think that was like so aggressive? And I'll argue that till I'm blue in the face. Like you could tell he was very angry. Oh, I just spit everywhere. Great. He then gives the smoothie that he made with essential oils in it to his daughter for his very young daughter to consume. So that's great. Z-Man then goes on to talk about references to essential oils in the Bible. Um, not an expert in that area. Let me know if that makes sense, if you are an expert. When I started looking at research and seeing the direct impact that essential oils have on the limbic system, where your mood, your memory, your emotions lie, helping with the symptoms related to a number of diseases, including cancer. I was astounded. Hmm? Hmm? But also, if you're gonna make all of these claims about blood pressure, cancer, cite studies, maybe? Maybe, at least, please, please? So we can at least look at what information you're basing all of this off of. Is the study done with rats, not humans? Is it a fair study with a large pool of people studied over a very long period of time? You know, what studies? It also does kind of scare me that they're mixing religion into this entire conversation. Just because if you are Christian, you might start to believe that using essential oils is a part of that belief. And so many people who want to be good Christians might start ingesting essential oils because of that. And that's kind of upsetting to me. Then we meet Z woman, um, or Mrs. Z. And she uh, is doing whatever she's doing right now. The glam life, go off, but good for you. Z woman goes on to saying, we're using what God has given us to help benefit other people. That's what we signed up for. That's what we committed to. Why do they terrify me for some reason? These people are terrifying to me for some reason. I'm afraid. Maybe I'm just intimidated by their seemingly perfect put together life, but something about them like literally gives me goosebumps. Oh, I wish you guys could hear this audio so badly. I don't even know what to do at this point. It's basically just them in the kitchen about to film a segment for their essential oil blog. And Z-Man just so awkwardly says, All right, here we are in the kitchen with Mama Z. Like in that exact tone. And she just stands there awkwardly smiling. And it's just the most beautifully awkward interaction. It's amazing, but also cringy. Why was that so awkward and uncomfortable to me? I gotta say, my wife and I, we're just as real as anyone else is. We're just as real as anyone else is. We're not aliens in human bodies trying to relate to the human experience. 
No, we're real, just like you. We too wake up in our bed pods every morning and brush our face and wash our teeth, just like you. And I think that, out of everything, is the reason why our online popularity has soared. Because people can relate to us. People can relate? To you? Who? Um, I wish I could relate, but I... Yeah. <laughs> This is another extremely awkward clip that I had to show you guys. I just really wish you could once again hear the audio. But Z-Man goes on to say, And that's it. We're not trying to pretend we're something that we're not. And then you just see the wife smile and how fake it is in this clip. And it's just so cringy. Oh my gosh. Oh, the <laughs> cringe. No. Wow, what an amazing video. Okay, we done. Z-Man then goes on to talk about his courses and how affordable they are because their most expensive masterclass is only $77. Oh no, here's the website. <gasps> Natural Living Family with Dr. Z and Mama Z. Is anyone else having the Get Rich Guru Scammer Freebot flashbacks? With 150 plus natural recipes and healing remedies, get our best-selling book, The Healing Power of Essential Oils. Buy today and get instant access to $300 in advanced training resources for free. It's free, but you just said it was $77. So why do they have the free sign there? Why, people? Why do you do this? This feels so extremely wrong to me. So many courses have this free tag on it when it's not free. It just, it feels like this should be illegal at this point. And of course, they're selling all of these master courses on all of these different ways to incorporate essential oils into your life. So of course, they're going to use essential oils in all of these different ways and say essential oils have all these different healing powers when they just might not. All of these say, watch free, try for only $1. It's only free 99. And this is one of the worst clips of the first part of this entire episode. Z-Man basically tries to talk about how if you're on food stamps, you can still afford their courses. You just stop buying Starbucks and you'll be able to afford a course. Sir, excuse me? Are you kidding me? Insinuating that people who are on food stamps are also buying Starbucks? What? That shows me that this man is so far away from reality, so privileged, he has no idea because what? Z-Man then goes on to talk about how natural living, in his mind, is actually a for-profit ministry, not like a self-run blog and company or anything like that. A for-profit ministry. Many people ask, can essential oils cure cancer? And I'll get crucified for this. I love how he so tactfully used the word crucified as well. But I've seen documentation, I've seen the reports. They had cancer, they used essential oils, now they don't have cancer. And correlation means causation, right? Right? How am I going to say that's not possible? Essential oils can help people with cancer. You don't have to say it's not possible, you just have to say, there's no evidence for that and I don't recommend only using essential oils to cure cancer. That's all you have to say it's really not that hard but dr z over here doesn't want possible obstacles getting in the way of his 77 dollar course let's be real allegedly z-man then complains about how the fta is making it illegal to make medical claims when there is no evidence to back it up why would they do that that's just so dramatic they've made it illegal to make claims when you're selling essential oils. They are in the way of our freedom to scam people who are dealing with medical ailments and I'm upset about it. Like, yes, the FDA doesn't want you selling snake oil. How is this new? 
Like, it's one thing when proponents of MLM companies, like, that's really messed up, of course, when they give all these medical claims and stuff. But it's a whole other thing if you are the company and you're like, step right up and get your essential snake oil. It cures cancer, it cures acne, and most of all, it's endorsed by God. Like, when you're the one selling it, it's kind of even worse to be making those claims. The system has been designed to keep away this message, but we have the freedom of speech to share what we do. How'd I know who's gonna bring up the freedom of speech? The freedom to hurt as many people as you want to with your words. That's what it means, right? It's in the constitution itself. And we've been able to help millions. I mean, don't get me wrong, I do think if you believe in something, you have every right to talk about it, but there is a line that I think can be crossed when you have a bias against something because you're selling maybe not even essential oil products, but courses and things that directly benefit from beliefs in essential oils. I do think that there could be benefits, but I also think these benefits have to be studied. Anecdotal evidence is only one small aspect of a full, well-rounded study, yet it's being taken at face value. And then the next thing we react to is a woman that says, I fully credit essential oils for saving my life. And that's the end of part one of this series. Bye, Kombucha Madison is gone. So that is the end of part one. The second part, if you couldn't already tell, is going into the MLMs of essential oils. The essential oil MLMs. Yeah, and I can already tell from the screen that I paused on that this is going to be really, really interesting. The first part of this, I already had so much to say, but the second part, wow, I think it's gonna be a lot. Yeah. This next part is going to be a lot, so stay tuned. And definitely check out Unwell, it's pretty good, pretty good series. <laughs>